All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. Today we're talking about the Minnesota Vikings. Every single week, they've just shown me why and why they're legit and why they're the best team in football. Yes, this was not a perfect game. The second half was an absolute disaster. But the Vikings, they find ways to win games. They were up 28 to nothing in this one, and they ended up scoring just three points in that second half. But those three points ended up winning them the game. I mean, there was so much to take away in this game. This was wild. Just to see the defense be able to get after Jordan Love like that, to me, is just mesmerizing. Yeah, he threw for 389 yards, but it was on 54 attempts. Just the fact that you forced Love to throw that much is absolutely brilliant. Three picks. He tried to do too much. He had four touchdowns, which is great. But the Vikings, their defense in the first half could not have played better. Their offense uh, could not have played better. The one issue, obviously, was that muff fumble on their return. That was just, I don't know how uh, Naylor tried to make a catch in that. Just did, didn't make any sense whatsoever. And that gave the Packers a lot of momentum. But just to close out the Packers in this one, Man, does it feel good. 4-0 on the season, of course. Uh, and the Vikings, they've beaten such good competition. I had the Packers going to the Super Bowl coming into the year. Knock them off. The Houston Texans, I had as number two in my AFC rankings coming into the year. Chiefs were number one. Knock them off. The 49ers, I mean, the 49ers, they won the NFC last year, beat them. And then the New York Giants were actually sneaky good, especially defensively, right? A lot of people said that, oh, you beat the Giants. The Giants are not that bad. Yeah, they're not going to win a lot of games this year, but again, they're, they've are they been in every game pretty much this season. Like the Commanders, they were into the end. Uh, the Cowboys, they were into the end. And um, they beat the Browns. And I, uh, who they, oh yeah, and obviously the Vikings. Okay, they weren't in the Vikings game, but that's proving my point is you guys are amazing. You're the best team in football. That's going to be in the title. So the one game the Giants weren't in, didn't have a chance to win, was you guys, which again, shows why the Vikings are legit. I mean, I don't know if there's truly a weakness to this team, because if you look at the offense, we'll start off with that. And the strength of the Vikings is their defense, but their offense has been elite too. Sam Darnold did throw a pick, which guys, I watched the condensed version. From what I saw in that condensed view, that looked like an incompletion. So I don't personally don't think it should have been a pick. If you guys disagree, let me know. But that shouldn't have happened. And if that doesn't happen, uh, I feel like this game would have been a lot different. Just momentum kept building and building and building for the Packers. And that's why they almost came back. But a couple of things like the muff and that, the fumble obviously was a fumble on Darnold and he's now fumbled four times. He's lost one of them on the season. That was just, uh, it, was, it was a really good pressure blitz. The, the Packers didn't blitz much in this game because if you blitz the Vikings, you're putting Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison and Jalen Naylor in one-on-one -on -one situations. Have fun doing that, right? You're, you'd are you have to be really, really stupid to do that, especially with the way Sam Darnold's been playing. I mean, Darnold, to me, is should he be the front runner for MVP? I know it's not a quarterback award, but 4-0 team, 8 touchdowns, 2 picks, 72.6 rating uh, QBR, which is 4th, 14th in passing yards, 657. Darnold's look really good. And it's not just from the stats, it's from the eye test. He, he is playing some high-level quarterback. I mean, I'll even go as far as saying the Vikings should lock him up long term. JJ McCarthy's 21 years old, man. He can barely even legally drink a beer. Why not just keep him on the bench for the next couple of years? Because by the time he's, you know, seen Arnold play for you know three, four years, whatever the contract is, and he comes in and takes over, imagine how much beneficial that's going to be to the Vikings. Now McCarthy, he's so good and so mature, and preseason's preseason, but. He might be so good to where you, you really can't wait that long, but Jordan Love was the same thing. He sat behind Aaron Rodgers, I get it, but you look at Jordan Love, what he did last year, man. He's 25, so it just goes to show that the Vikings have all the leverage here, man. They have an elite defense, the best defense. I, I don't even know if it's close, if I'm being honest with you guys. Yeah, the Steelers have a good defense. The Who else has a good defense? The, the Chargers have a really good defense, but like the Vikings defense terrifies me. I'm not even on the field. Like, I'm watching this from my apartment in Houston, Texas, and I'm scared of this defense. I, at one point in time, the Vikings had 11 guys lined up and up front in the box. I'm like, and then they drop back however many. I mean, how do you even know what to do with the ball? Like, Jordan Love is, again, he, he's so efficient. He's one of the best quarterbacks, and he throws three picks. He looked confused. He was under pressure. I mean, you just don't see Jordan Love be this uncharacteristic with the football. And I get you're behind. You're trying to make a play, get your team in the game. But again, this was a lot of just reckless football. 54 attempts, three picks. Uh, the Packers, they also ended up losing 
you know, uh, two fumbles in this game. Are they well? They lost. I guess it was technically one, right? Oh yeah, it was one technically. They lost. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know. But yeah, because the uh, was it was it? Yeah, it was. It was two fumbles. I don't know. Whatever. But the point being is that there was a lot of takeaways in this game, a lot of pressure, and the Packers did look uncomfortable. And their comeback, it fell short, but the Vikings will, you know, confidently take this game. They have no issues whatsoever with the outcome. Obviously, there's going to be a lot to go over when they watch the film, and there's going to be a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. But whenever you go on the road against a divisional rival and you walk out of there with a win, I mean, there's just not much better of a feeling, man. Uh, it's just, it's crazy too, because the Vikings, their biggest weakness was their schedule. I mean, this schedule is so difficult. We're talking about legit, probably three Super Bowl contenders that the Vikings have beat coming into the year already. They're going to face off against another one in the Jets, another one against the Lions. And again, it depends on what you classify as a contender. You guys might be like 49ers, you know, Chiefs, maybe Lions, maybe you have a really short list. To me, I'm looking at teams that I think can win the Super Bowl and legitimately in the first six games for the Vikings, I think six of them can't, everyone besides the Giants. So. To be able to win these games is unbelievable to begin with, but it's also how they're winning too, man. We just saw them have a big lead, nearly give it up, but they were resilient. They ended up finding a way to win it. They dominate the Texans. The Niners game, they dominated that. The only reason it looks that close, one score, is because of that Aaron Jones fumble um, down in the, the goal line, man. It was like the one yard line or whatever. But let's move on and let's just talk about stars from this game. Tomorrow, we're going to do a more in-depth breakdown. Um, this is just my reaction after the game. It's always going to be all over the place, man. My heart is still racing. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not racing because I'm like seven minutes in, but it was when I started recording. So, but just stars from this game. Aaron Jones, 22 for 93 as a receiver, 4 for 46. I mean, Jones on a one-year deal, you let go, obviously, of... Uh, who was who even was the was it Alexander Madison was the starter, right? Uh Ty Chandler was here too. I mean, Alexander Madison's been solid for the Raiders, but I mean healthy Aaron Jones is absolutely elite, top ten back, maybe even higher than that, guys. He's so good. And he just bet on himself and the Vikings aren't complaining about that. Sam Darnold was a star in this game. Yeah, he had a fumble. He had a, in quotation a pick. I didn't think it looked like a pick, but 275, good efficiency. Darnold also just the Packers defense is legit man Jeff Hafley coming over from uh, Boston College and just the respect towards these weapons Kevin O'Connell and, and Darnold himself just to not blitz him and, and Darnold made the right decisions I thought Sam Darnold looked good in this game just going through his progressions and then also Justin Jefferson looked good which is no surprise had that one-on-one -on -one catch perfect coverage brings it down with one hand uh, Addison was fantastic three for 72 and a touchdown through the air he also had a seven yard rushing touchdown and then the defense, I hear how this doesn't show interceptions because I like to be honest with you guys, but like if I'm if I'm being real, the defense in total in general was just collectively good. There isn't really one guy to stand out like Blake Hashman was a huge pickup. Cameron Bynum made a play at a pick and well, he's in his fourth year, I believe. Uh, this you know, Byron Murphy or maybe it was. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I can't see picks on this. Uh, Byron Murphy Jr. I know how to pick too. He was a pickup and a lot of these new guys too. Like Andrew Van Kingle, for example, it's just Stephon Gilmore made plays. I mean, it was already a good defense last year, a top 10 defense. And I said that in the offseason, too, and a lot of people called me crazy. But now it's without question the best. We haven't seen a team consistently move the ball on the Packers. Yeah, the, they did it in the second half. But again, like the first half, they had it was there was nothing. So who will it be? I don't know. But. I mean, the Vikings are building something special. And I think my favorite thing about them is how they have basically two head coaches on their team. Like Brian Flores should be a head coach. Normally, you look at the top offensive minds. Teams are forced to give them the head coach job so that they can get them. Well, what about Brian Flores? If you want his defensive scheme, you're going to have to head coach him, man. And teams haven't done that. So the Vikings basically have a head coach. And I'm not saying like he's a former head. No, I'm saying he should be a head coach. Like he's definitely a lot better than some of the coaches in the league right now, especially with the number in the numbers speak for itself but so you have brian flores calling your defense you have kevin o'connell who's one of the best offensive minds in the game put those together the additions are wild the guys are taking leaps the vikings are the best team in the nfl to me i don't know if anybody can beat them right now you'd have to play four quarters of your highest level football and like good luck doing that man there's just there's way too many weapons way too much going on right now to be able to do that 
And with the Jets coming up, who are coming off an embarrassing loss of the Broncos by week and then getting the Lions at home, I mean, we could seriously be talking about the Vikings starting off 6-0. and And then they've got the Rams, Colts, Jags, Titans, Bears, Cardinals, Falcons, Bears. Yeah, none of those games are going to be easy. But, like, the Vikings, man, like, we could be having some serious discussions about them guys being the number one seed in football, which would give them home field throughout the NFC playoffs. It's just unbelievable. It's ridiculous.